Hey, welcome to the KXC Midweek Edition. My name's Emma, um, huge welcome to you. Welcome to my living room. Um, you know, place my plants behind me so we are all sorted, ready to go. Um, but great that you're joining us for this week. And if this is the first time that you're checking a midweek edition out, especially warm welcome to you as well. Uh, the heart behind these moments, they're just that we'd gather together um, in the middle of the week just to center ourselves afresh on the person of Jesus. So just to help us do that, um, coming up in the next few minutes, we're gonna have a short liturgy of hope um, read out over us, just that we might take a moment to sit, to pause, to reflect in this time. We've also gonna be carrying on in our series called Reading the Times, um, and Pete is interviewing Debbie Wright, who is an incredible leader, and along with her husband John, they lead Trent Vineyard Nottingham, um, a brilliant church in Nottingham, as the name suggests. Um, but they're also the national directors of Vineyard Churches, across the UK and Ireland as well. So Pete caught up with Debbie a few weeks ago um, and that's a brilliant interview coming up. And as well as all of that, we've got Kath Carter, the one and only, giving us a short devotional thought as well. But before we launch into any of those things, um, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna come and we're gonna worship. So let's do that now. Proclaim you are 
It is an absolute gift to be joined by Debbie Wright, who leads Trent Vineyard in Nottingham, the church where B and I met, um, got to hang out and eventually got engaged, got married, um, but also oversees the vineyard movement in the UK. So thank you so much, Debbie, for carving out space it's to join total us. Total pleasure. Total pleasure. So we're asking some friends and leaders that we love and trust the same two questions. The first one is based in Matthew 16, where Jesus says to the Pharisees, you can look at the stars and you can forecast the weather, but why can't you read the signs of the times? So we're trying to ask leaders, where do you see God at work right now? Because we we believe it's our task as followers of Jesus to figure out where God's at work and to jump on board. So that's the first question. And the second question, which we'll get to later, is just personally, what are you learning right now? This is such an extraordinary time. You know, where where are you, yeah, learning more about God and the kingdom in this season? So first question, yeah, where's where do you see the work of God, you know, in your community, but nationally, maybe even globally? Yeah, do you know, I really believe that there is such an extraordinary activity of the Holy Spirit at the moment. And um, we're having to sort of find new ways of discerning what he's doing and catching up, but we're all pivoting, but trying to really discern the Spirit, not just moving with, you know, a great idea in this moment, but actually discern the Spirit. I think we in the vineyard feel that the Lord began to prepare us for something. But at the same time, with the rest of the churches in the UK, where we've been all praying in, in unity, like we've seen never before in history, I mean, across denominations. And I think together with prayer and kind of a a tune to the prophetic, we feel the Lord was preparing us for something that that was going to be birthed in this season. So I feel like we're we're almost, um, are we in the labour pains? Is it the, the, the babies like coming out? Or, you know, I do think we're going to come through this time transformed. And yeah. some really good things are happening amidst the pain. And labour is always painful. And I just want to just, can I, I don't know if you, you've heard about these two dreams that I had about giving yeah, birth sure. to babies and then and then something Carol Wimber said. So this is like a couple of years ago, out of the blue, I never dreamed dreams. So I am probably quite prophetic, but I don't dream dreams. And I had this, this dream, I woke up in the morning, I was crying because I'd had a baby, I'd lost the baby. And I just was like, Lord, I'm not, I'm, I'm menopause, you know, I'm past the menopause, I can't have babies. Yeah. And I, but Lord, how is it that I could have, if I'd only known? And I felt the Lord say, if you'd known, what would you have done? I thought, well, I would have nurtured the baby and myself, I would have gone to the doctors, I would have paid attention, yeah. I would have prepared. So I felt the Lord say, start preparing. And I started to sort of talk about let's nurture expectations. So we started fasting as a as a movement. So 21 days in January before our National Leaders Conference, not for the National Leaders Conference itself, but for what God wanted to do with us, um, yeah. through us in a season ahead for something that's coming, a real sense that something's coming. And um, and I'm not saying that the something has come yet, but I do think this yeah. is like the labor pains of what's to come. Yeah. And we began to pray. Then I, I had another, a year later, um, I had another dream where I'd had a baby. It was a healthy baby, I think. And then, um, but I'm asking like, what is this? Also, I've had the baby. It's going to be a healthy baby. It's going to be all right. And uh, I mean, maybe a couple of those. And I was talking about it with, uh, just in January, I was in Israel. I was talking about it with Susie and Nicola who were traveling with me, they're on our staff. And I said, these these baby dreams, you know, what's going on? And, um, And as we were asking, that night, I had an email from a young girl in our church who'd also had a dream about a baby. And she'd given the baby away to someone else to hold and they dropped the baby. And so the important thing was, you know, you're going to get this baby, don't drop the baby. Yeah. So again, this thing, yeah. pay attention to the baby that's coming. So um, as we entered this season, I thought this is something really serious. The Lord's birthing something in this season. Yeah. But together with that, there was this word that we heard from Carol Wimber. Now, she's been carrying this word for six years, uh, for about six years. And we interviewed her this summer just for a, the story of the vineyard. 
at the end of it, yeah. she gave this word. She said, this isn't just for the vineyard. This is for everybody. Every need, everybody needs to hear this word across the church worldwide. Something is coming. And she said twice, she said, it's going to be terrible, but amazing, or it's going to be terrible and wonderful. And it's going to affect everybody, but everybody needs to take their place take your place and um so as i as we came away from that i thought what does it mean and so in this season what does it mean to take our place i think the holy spirit is stirring every one of us to take our place in terms of firstly our identity who yeah. are we in christ what are the gifts he's given us but also where are we in our family or in our job you know where do we have influence whether it's as simple as serving in a supermarket, how am I representing Jesus as I serve others? On the front line, as a doctor, a surgeon, as a politician, as an estate agent, if I'm locked in lockdown, how am I representing Christ in this season? And I am just amazed and excited at, at um, how different Christians, and certainly in the vineyard, we're hearing story after story of people stepping up to this moment to meet the needs of their neighbours yeah. and friends, to pray for healing and see healing over the internet on phone calls, on recorded messages. I mean, amazing generosity and kindness and volunteers yeah. coming out the woodwork to, to be able to um, take food to food banks and just yeah. all that stuff. It's amazing what God is doing. So in terms of 21 days of fasting, which is incredible to think that within a month or two of that, you, we would all find ourselves in lockdown thinking, oh, my goodness, what's happening? And yet believing that God is at work, that God takes all things and works them for good. In terms of like, you know, how are you nurturing as, as a kind of family, as a church in Nottingham? How are you nurturing expectation now, recognising that we're still waiting for this kind of new life to break out? What does that look like now? Not getting, because uh, we can get very anxious, can't we? Anxious about, yeah. first it was anxious as we went into lockdown, anxious about getting the virus, anxious about who was going to be affected, and now anxious yeah. about coming out of lockdown. And I think for me, yeah. it was like the, the Lord kept saying, this isn't a time for anxiety and fear, Debbie. This is a time to tra be for transformation. It's a time for repentance. Yeah. So interestingly, I felt the Lord say, you know, in this wake up call, um, we will see the the world turning to God, like, and I'm, I'm not saying they're necessarily turning to God in a big way, but they're turning to prayer. Yeah. They're buying yeah. Bibles in it, more than we've ever seen before, and I'm yeah. having conversations with people who aren't believers, and they're all uh, referencing spiritual thoughts, and and they're yeah. thinking in a different way to they've thought before. So I think something's happening with them. With us as Christians, I think that this is a moment to go, Lord, I want to be prepared. I want to nurture this and I that means you know if I was pregnant I'd be taking vitamins I'd be eating the right yeah. food what am I digesting what am I listening to am I spending yeah. my time watching Netflix no I've heart I mean yeah. of all the times when I've got more time I am um listening to podcasts that are feeding my soul yeah. I'm reading the scriptures I'm do, I'm yeah. taking on you know like even I'm seeing things I've not seen before you know when Jesus is talking about you know to his disciples preparing them when they when he tells them you're going to have trouble but the Holy Spirit's going to come and yeah. he says you know um you know don't worry don't be fearful because in me in me you'll overcome he's the one who overcame yeah. and it's like I can only do this in Christ. I mean, what does that mean? And I just sitting there with the reality that just it, it, it's just been bigger than ever, this awareness that I am in Christ and we're going to do amazing things um, with courage. And I want to get like yeah. I'm building myself up for what's to come and not trying to dwell too much on um, the, the pain of losing um, this, the big, you know, like we're a yeah. big church. I love worshipping with a crowd. I mean, the yeah. buzz, the worship, as soon as the band kicks off, when it's big, yeah. I'm there with my... I, I, <laughs> I, how much of that... I mean, I began to say to myself, Lord, in that intimate moment, how much of the, is that... Um, Am I performing in front of other people? Was yeah. it genuine? Was that real worship? Was it? Were you yeah. were you receiving that as my worship? What does my worship look like now? And then mm -hmm. finding that actually I... I can listen to worship on on all sorts of you know uh, the phone yeah. and everything, but it's not the same as being in that room. And I'm having to yeah. find new ways to connect with the Lord and demonstrate my worship to Him. But it's it's not as musical as I thought it was because I and, yeah. and I'm missing being with my 
you know, my church worshipping together. Oh, that's yeah. been a huge... Was it an idol? I don't know if it was. I just feel it's a testing time. Will you worship yeah. me even without the big music, the band and the people around you? Will you sense my spirit in that time on your own? Are you going to wait for me? You know, yeah. and I, I feel so much of like the song of songs, you know, you know, awaken and, and um, yeah. you know, where, you know, come to me. You know, like the whole thing is just... Uh, you know, a Matt Redman song that he wrote years ago, one of his first ones, Wake Up My Soul, you know, yeah, um, Psalm classic. 57, I think it is. And and it's like, wake up my soul. And I'm like, oh, Lord, I want to wake up to you in a new yeah. way. You know, so I think yeah. it's our, our own relationship with the Lord being just strengthened and deepening. At the same time, it's like every day we face crisis. I mean, every, I cannot yeah. tell you how many... Uh, our teams have faced different crises, our, yeah. our children. I mean, I'm, I'm like... And the Lord's saying, don't get anxious, Debbie. You know, that's a yeah. command. I've told you not to worry. Yeah. It's not good for you to worry. Don't go there. And it's like that discipline of not, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah. So in, in terms of, you know, revival, I love that these very vivid dreams then about new life, you know, and the word revival literally means, you know, new life. And yet revival historically often breaks out in moments of a wilderness where there's desperation um, there's a spiritual hunger that emerges. And I kind of feel like we're experiencing both, aren't we? That this feels like a wilderness moment where things are being exposed, and they always are in in the wilderness. So idols are being exposed. You know, we spoke before we started filming about what's happening right now in terms of the aftermath of George Floyd's death and, and racism is being exposed. So all of this stuff is being exposed in the wilderness. And yet the wilderness is the place where God woos his people back to him and pours his love out upon them. And actually the wilderness is often the place where life breaks out. And that's a sign that it's God. It's not something we did in our own strength. So how, how do you live in that? that kind of in-between place where we are grieving. I feel the same. Oh, I can't wait to gather with the people of KXC again. So I'm grieving, but there's hope because I believe that God's at work in the most extraordinary way. How are you personally like holding those two intentions? Well, I think, you know, um, we are on a journey through the wilderness, as you say. I think that one of the key things that happens before any revival is repentance. And I think that, as you just mentioned, and we were talking about earlier, about what happened when we all became aware of this killing of George Floyd. And we were, you know, it was we were sickened by the the sense of it. And I do think um, as a white person who has I didn't know I was privileged. I, I never really thought through those things before these last couple of weeks. I've really been able to reflect more deeply about my own lack of awareness and sensitivity to what my black brothers and sisters were experiencing as a collective group. Um, You know, there's there's the American context, but there's a UK context to what our brothers and sisters have suffered. And so I think that part of this sense of anticipation for revival, which which I do believe is gonna come at some point, Part of the journey is repentance. And so on the racial thing itself, there is a pivoting that's happening, a turning from our old ways of thinking to embracing more listening, more serious listening. I think that's the first step is we can't make any changes until we've truly listened and then um, invite our brothers and sisters from uh, our black brothers and sisters, our Asian brothers and sisters, people from different yeah. cultures and minority groups to be to have a seat at the table of influence. Yeah. What does yeah. it look like for our church family to really be your family? Because I had yes. assumed that we were people's family, but I've realized yeah. that they've they some of them haven't felt they could truly be themselves. That would that be yeah. right? All these things. So I think um, in this moment, there's as you say, there's like, an awareness that the Spirit of God is with us, he's meeting with us, new things are happening. I mean, in our Vineyard Kids, our our Trent Vineyard Kids, are um, actually, they are now filming, sharing devotionals. So we've got eight-year-old children doing devotionals that then in the midweek, they're being shared with the other kids. So we're raising up leaders in a new way at a young age. And just, you know, seeing, again, the the healings that we're seeing, uh, we're doing healing rooms and and, um, prophetic stuff and just all sorts of things where we're seeing, like we had 60 people on the evening of Pentecost sign up to receive healing. And so we had to mobilize 120 and more people to minister on Zoom calls going into small (laughs) rooms. Brilliant. And we saw <laughs> phenomenal things happen. I mean, it's just amazing. Yeah. So these are exciting things that we're seeing 
you know, and, and also just the, we we thought like, would we have to let go of some of our hallmarks? So at Trent, we've yeah. got one of them is doing things well. Well, yeah. at, be- at the beginning, nothing was going well. <laughs> it was like, it was just, we were, in, in our attempts to do things well, we were missing the real yeah. need, which was to connect. And then we had to say, we yeah. came up with a phrase, connection over perfection. And actually yeah. doing things well for us in the moment is about connecting with our people. We realized we yeah. had probably 2,000 people of our kind of, you know, three and a half thousand kind of congregation. 2,000 of them were not in small groups. And so, yeah. and some of them, we didn't have their addresses. So we yeah. managed to get a, a connection thing going, a big team mobilized. And in the last month, we've connected with 2,000 people who were, weren't in small groups. Wow. So, I mean, and some of them were divine appointments. So actually, we've realized our church really cares. Like that compassion yeah. hallmark is just, you know, and generosity. And it's just, just exploded in this time. So yeah. it's Amazing. good things, but it's also repentance personally yeah. repenting from my own idols of 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 what it meant to be in a, in what looked you know the gather community i yeah. think you know one little thing that i shared in a in a little thought that i shared online was that um i for 30 years had false nails like acrylic nails yeah. um yeah. which i know this generation are probably more natural than than my generation i'm 50 yeah seven I think I can't remember my exact age but um they've gone and I like they, they're just yeah. awful and I've been doing gardening and things that I don't I don't lift heavy weights and do yeah. rough work you know but I've been having I've been doing all those things but I feel like there's a a letting go of things that I thought were important and an wow. embracing things that are just it's just lovely to cook for a family again and to clean yeah. which I've usually had a cleaner and um yeah. and it's been actually these things are good for us they're so good for us yeah. Amazing. Final question then, uh, you know, just building on the sort of these visions of new life then, having had the dreams and like heard Carol Wimber articulate what she sense, sensed is to come. In terms of your biggest prayer now as you look on the horizon, trusting God that he's at work and that new life's, you know, you know, coming. What What's your biggest prayer? Do you know, I, I my biggest prayer is that is that for the people who are believers, that they would... Um, kind of go with the transformation um, that the Lord wants to do with them. It's painful, but to actually yeah. stick with it and come through the other side, through the refiner's fire, through the fire, to come out the other side, really more effective, more yeah. committed, more passionate about the Lord. And then for unbelievers, that they would wake up yeah. and meet Jesus and we would be able to disciple them effectively, you know, which whatever tools we have to use. Yeah. Debbie, that's been such a gift. You're an inspiration and you and John, the church you lead, but the role you play nationally, you are such an incredible gift. So thank you so much for joining us. God bless. God bless you. Do not be afraid. Your angels proclaim to those shaking shepherds and you whisper the same generation after generation to us. But diseases of all kinds ravage our world. Heartbreak turns commonplace and nameless grief settles deep in our bones. Is it any wonder we tremble so easily? You remember that we are made of dust and breath and how our unnaturally natural tendency is to cower in the dark places of our minds, forgetting the shadow of safety you offer under your wings wide enough to hold us all. Our groaning is not hidden from you, O Holy Father. Do not ignore our weeping cries and quaking knees and besieged hearts. For you alone hold power to pull us from the miry pit, the one from which fear has stolen our ladder. How long, O God, when will we see your goodness in the land of the living? O Christ, who defeated the sting of death upon the cross, be near and calm the sea within us with one word, so that we may then comfort others with the same comfort you give to us. Out of your loving kindness, do not condemn our fear, but rather call us into something far more magnificent. Wild, glorious trust in the one who holds the whole world together. Amen. 
Hi everyone, my name's Kath, I'm part of the KXC team, and today I want to reflect on a passage from the Bible that God highlighted to me at the very beginning of the COVID-19 lockdown. And it's the part where Paul and Silas, who are disciples of Jesus, have been beaten up by a crowd and been thrown into prison. And so I'm going to read from Acts 16, starting at verse 25. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once, all the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. And this is an awesome story. We see the power of God literally breaking in. But what God highlighted to me was the fact that when Paul and Silas began to pray and to praise God in the middle of prison in that moment, they would have been at their lowest point, both physically and emotionally. If we just think about it, they'd been severely flogged with rods. They would most certainly have been in physical pain and probably bleeding. They'd been put in stocks. They couldn't move, so their feet were in stocks. It was the middle of the night, so it would have been pitch darkness. And everything feels worse in the middle of the night, doesn't it? And they didn't know what was going to happen. They were in an impossible situation without hope. Yet it was in the middle of that moment that they chose to worship and to praise. And I felt like God in that moment was saying to us, it's time to learn to and choose to worship in the middle of darkness, in the middle of fear, and in the middle of uncertainty. And I actually think this word is even more relevant for us right now. I don't know about you, but one of the things I'm missing most at the moment is gathering together on a Sunday to worship, to hear all of our voices in the room worshipping, to sense the Spirit of God with us together and to feel faith rise in the room. And it just doesn't feel the same singing songs of worship in front of a computer on my own in a room where all I can hear is my own voice. And it's really tempting to just not do it at all. It can feel so flat and and foolish. I'm really tired of it and I'm fed up with it. But I feel like God is saying, now is the time for us to learn to lead ourselves in worship in this moment. Because when we make the choice to worship and to pray when all we are most aware of is our own emptiness, weariness, insecurity, even fear. It actually takes more faith than when we are all gathered together and being swept up in that moment. When we choose to declare God's truth over our own lives and over the world around us, when we choose to speak out his goodness I believe that a violent shaking happens and it happens first in the spiritual realm. And I wish sometimes that we could see in this into the spiritual realm. But I think that in the middle of our darkness, when we've got just a tiny bit of faith and we choose to praise, I get this impression of heaven beginning to laugh in anticipation at the breakthrough that is about to come. I believe that angels pay attention. I think that demons begin to flee and the spiritual strongholds that oppress us and bind us begin to shake and to crack at their very foundations. When we choose to worship in the midst of darkness, things begin to shift. They shift in us, they shift in the spiritual realm, and then they begin to shift in the physical world around us. Situations and circumstances that felt immovable and impossible will begin to move. And we don't know how and we don't know when the breakthrough is going to come, but we do know that when we choose to worship King Jesus, no matter how we feel or no matter what we see, that a breakthrough of heaven on earth is certainly on the way. God, 
God of Abraham, you're the God of covenant and faithful promises. Time and time again, you've proven you do just what you say. Though the storms may come and the winds may blow, I remain steadfast and let my heart learn when you speak a word it will come to pass so great is your faithfulness to me so great is your faithfulness to me from the rising sun to the setting same I will praise your name so great is your faithfulness to me God, from age to age, though the earth may pass away, your word remains the same, oh, your history can prove, there's nothing you can do, you're faithful and true, though the storms may come and the winds may blow, I'll remain steadfast. And let my heart learn when you speak a word It will come to pass So great is your faithfulness to me So great is your faithfulness to me from the rising sun to the setting same I will praise your name Oh great is your faithfulness to me Oh great is your faithfulness Your 
Amazing, that's it for us. Thanks so much for joining us um, this week. We'll be back again this time next week for another midweek edition. Um, and also we hold services on a Sunday, which we'd love to invite you to as well. Um, we have a 10 a.m. family service and then 11 a.m. and 4.30 service for everyone else. Um, all the details on how to join in with those are on our website, kxc.org.uk. Um, so do join us for them. But thanks so much for watching and hope you have a brilliant rest of the week. <laughs>